Hello, viewer. Welcome back to the lecture series, Material Science and Engineering. Today's lecture, we will discuss about the superconductivity of the material. Superconductivity is the disappearance of electrical resistance below a certain temperature. The temperature below which superconductivity is attained is known as the critical temperature Tc. The figure shown here is a characteristics plot of resistivity across the temperature T. It is a resistivity versus temperature plot. In this characteristics curve, in the blue curve, this is for the normal metal. As we lower the temperature, the resistivity decreases, but after certain time, when it is approaching towards the zero degree absolute temperature, that time we will find the resistivity is not decreasing. It is saturated, maintaining a certain value P residual. But for the superconductor, the property is not so. Like the normal metal, normal conductor, the resistivity decreases and at a temperature Tc suddenly we find that the resistivity drops down to zero. This is the property of the superconductor. A superconductor such as lead exhibits a transition to zero resistivity at critical temperature Tc, which is 7.2 degree Kelvin. Whereas a normal conductor such as silver exhibits residual resistivity at the lowest temperature. The temperature Tc is called the critical temperature. In 1911, the superconductivity of mercury was observed by Kemal Lingones. The superconductivity of mercury is at 4.15 degree Kelvin. Kemaling Ones received the Nobel Prize in 1913. This is the field of physics where thrice the Nobel Prize was given. This was the first Nobel Prize in 1930. In 1986, again, J.G. Bednoch and K. Alex Muller at IBM Research Laboratory in Juris discovered that a copper oxide based ceramic type compound lanthanum barium copper oxide which normally has very high resistivity becomes superconducting when cooled below 35 degree kelvin this temperature is quite high and this temperature is higher than the superconductivity 
showing temperature of mercury that is 4.15 degree Kelvin. And this is 35 degree Kelvin for lanthanum barium copper oxide. This Nobel Prize winning discovery opened a new era of high temperature superconductivity research. Now there are various ceramic compounds that are superconducting about the liquid nitrogen temperature 77 degree Kelvin. So the second time the Nobel Prize was given to Bedno and Muller in 1987. These are for the ceramic materials, not the normal conductors. Third Nobel Prize was given to Baden, Cooper and Schaefer for their Baden, Cooper, Schaefer theory, BCS theory. John Baden, Leon Cooper and John Schaefer they gave the BCS theory which explains the superconductivity phenomenon. How a material is becoming superconductor? A ceramic material, which is not a conductor, which is not behave like normal conductor, below certain temperature, it shows the superconductivity. Its resistance decreases with temperature due to less scattering of electrons produced by atomic vibrations. This is the property of the normal conductor. But this cannot explain when it is cooled down to certain temperature, cannot explain the superconducting phenomenon. Less scattering of electron is related with the conductivity, electrical conductivity to normal conductors. Cooper pair, below critical temperature Tc, Two oppositely spinning electrons traveling in opposite direction can attract each other indirectly through the deformation of the crystal lattice of positive metal ions. So it was found that the two oppositely spinning electrons when traveling in opposite direction they they can give the superconducting property how the thing is happening the electrons are negatively charged so both negative charge were supposed to repel each other instead of repelling they are traveling together. What is happening? Then this BCS theory, it explains that the two electrons indirectly interact in opposite direction through the deformation and vibration through the lattice positive ions. This indirect interaction at sufficiently low temperature is capable to overcome the mutual Coulombic repulsion between the electrons and form a pair of electrons 
that pair of electrons is called Cooper pair. So here the Coulombic repulsion force is less than the less than the force interaction force so they propagate together and higher conductivity can be given when materials cooled at sufficiently low temperature. This pair can move through the lattice providing superconductivity. Though there is the mutual Coulombic repulsion force, but when they travel together through the lattice, they provide superconductivity. Here is a scheme shown in figure, a Cooper pair, motion of Cooper pair through the lattice. Red dot carrying negative charge one is an electron and another red dot at the top signed as the two this is the second electron so this electron one and two is a pair they are traveling in opposite direction they are having opposite spin when they are traveling through the lattice the first electron one it attracts the positive ion of the lattice so there will be the lattice distortion positive ion as if it will be attracted towards the electron but when this second electron also will be traveling opposite direction and come in very much vicinity of the lattice positive ion this last is positive ion will be attracted towards the second electron so there will be an oscillation of the positive ion from one side to the another side so altogether as if electron one and electron two are uh, they are traveling together and they are giving higher conductivity thus the charge carrier in a superconductor is a pair of electrons instead of a single electron bcs theory applies well to the conventional superconductor the aluminium superconducting temperature critical temperature is 1.18 degree kelvin niobium germanium the tc is high 23 degree kelvin high temperature superconductor recently number of ceramic superconductors such as yttrium barium copper oxide have been discovered whose tc much higher yttrium barium copper oxide at a certain stoichiometry configuration the tc is 92 degree kelvin so it is much higher than the liquid nitrogen temperature liquid nitrogen temperature is 77 degree Kelvin. So this aluminium has the TC 1.18, niobium titanium 10.2, niobium aluminium is 18.9, niobium germanium is 23, yttrium barium copper oxide is 92, and 
tellurium, barium, calcium, copper oxide, that is 125, it is quite high. These are the high temperature superconductor, lithium, barium, copper oxide, and tellurium, barium, calcium, copper oxide. These are the high DC. Superconductivity and magnetism. So far, we are discussing about the conductivity versus temperature plots. And we discuss about various element superconductor and the compound superconductor also, ceramic superconductor. Now we will discuss about the superconductivity and magnetism relationship because ultimately we like to utilize the superconductor for preparing magnets where the large current will be flowing to the coil as because the conductivity is very high. So there will be much less loss. The loss will be almost nil. A material in a superconducting state will expel all the externally applied magnetic field. This is called Meissner effect. In the superconducting state, lines of force won't pass through it. In the normal conductor, when it is exposed to an external magnetic field, lines of force pass through it. But in case of superconductor, when it is cooled down below DC, it expels out all the lines of force. This phenomenon is known as magnetic levitation. So when a material becomes superconductor, that time that time it will expel out all the flux line, external flux lines. So as if the material is materials is floating in the magnetic field. This it is pictorially shown in here. This is another diagram where at different temperature, the comparison of the superconductor and perfect conductor is shown. At temperature less higher than TC, in case of both superconductor and perfect conductor, external lines of force passing through it. And when both the perfect conductor and superconductor cool down to less than TC, in case of superconductor, the lines of force expels out, it is not penetrating through the superconductor. In case of perfect conductor, it is penetrating. That is due to the creation of the surface current. So surface current is developed when it is superconductor. And that expels out the lines of force externally applied, lines of force, magnetic field lines. So 
so for a perfect conductor does not show masonry effect below the temperature tc here is an experiment where the levitation effect is shown the masonry effect is shown the yellow bottom this is a superconductor and over that is a magnet is placed now it is sitting properly when it is not superconducting so above the temperature tc it is sitting properly the magnet is sitting properly but when the bottom disc is cooled down to achieve its superconducting property that time this magnet placed over it will be floating and the flux line emanating from this small magnet no more will pass through the superconducting disc due to the vibration of the surface current the figure of the experiment is shown on the right hand side this is the pictorial view so when a superconductor becomes superconducting at below tc that time it becomes perfectly diamagnetic which means that there cannot be magnetic field inside the superconductor the photograph of a magnet levitating above a superconductor emerged in liquid nitrogen so the superconductor becomes super conducting whose tc is higher than the liquid nitrogen the levitation effect is visible here category of the super conductors the normal super conductor it shows a property below the critical temperature if someone cool it down to zero degree then the critical magnetic field produced or the superconductor if the superconductor is exposed to an external magnetic field after which the magnetic induction it can be it can be produced this figure shows the plot of that critical magnetic induction versus temperature plot so the yellow zone is the superconducting state and the other left out zone is the normal state and this is here is the material is laid so the tc is around 70 degrees in here such characteristics curves are available or mercury and tin mercury we know it is near 40 degrees kelvin 
तीन इज स्टील लोअर बट द नेचर ऑफ द कार्ब्स आर सेम दिस टाइप ऑफ सुपर कंडक्टर्स ऑल आर एलिमेंटरी सुपर कंडक्टर दिस आर द एलिमेंट्स दिस आर द टाइप ऑन सुपर कंडक्टर then what is the difference between type 1 and type 2 superconductor if the field is increased some of the superconducting material come back to the normal conducting state above a critical magnetic field hc the figure is c type 1 superconductor these are type 1 superconductor as for example aluminum lead etc the type 2 superconductor is another class of superconducting material where this field begins to intrude above a critical value of the applied field hc1 is the characteristic curve shown below and at a higher field hc2 it turns into a normal conductor in case of elementary superconductor at certain value of the applied field the induced field reduced to zero and the normal state starts there at higher value of this h value higher than hc for type 1 and type 2 the hc is like hc1 here but instead of dropping down the induced field drastically the induced field slowly decreases and the normal conducting state comes at hc2 so here is the difference with the applied field at hc induced field suddenly becomes zero in case of type 1 superconductor and at hc1 of another type that is type 2 it does not suddenly drop down to zero induced field does not drop down to zero but it slowly decreases and become zero at hc2 the supply field hc2 and besides that it attains the normal state so this to at the difference between type 1 and type 2 superconductor type 1 superconductor as because as the application of certain applied field beyond certain value it drops down the induced field drops down to zero so it is very difficult to utilize it for making the magnet with such superconductor type 1 superconductor but in case of type 2 beyond hc1 also in the higher side it does not drop down to zero it slowly decreases at the point hc and in case of type 2 it is hc1 
the material is perfectly superconductor and these are perfectly diamagnetic at this stage. In case of type 1, that at higher magnetic field than HC, the diamagnetism is fully lost. But in case of type 2 superconductor, that is not suddenly dropped down, show flux lines will be passing through it still and slowly it is decreases and sometime at HC2 it will be it will lose the its diamagnetism so as because this type 2 superconductor is convenient to handle so this magnet coils, superconducting magnet coils are produced with this type 2 superconductor as for example niobium tin, yttrium barium copper oxide, etc. Type 2 superconductor, how the flux lines are passing through it. Magnetic flux lines in the normal state, it is passing through it fully. And in the superconducting state, it is not at all passing through it. But in the mixed or vortex state, flux lines are passing through it, but the flux density will be much less. So the characteristics curve of the critical magnetic field and the temperature that can be shown like this. In the masonry state, the bottom yellow band is the masonry state and the top white space is the normal state. In between it is mixed or vortex state. At PC, the critical magnetic field becomes zero. It is the characteristics curve like this. Here is the temperature versus critical magnetic induction that plot. This is a very useful diagram. Uh, there are three of orthogonal axis, magnetic induction versus temperature versus current density plot because these coils are produced to the on the basis of the current density J. So it is a plot, the EOLO area it is showing the effective zone for preparing the magnet coils. So the current density will be accommodated within JC. JC it is huge, actually 10 to the power 7 ampere per square meter it is huge. And for a type 2 superconductor, for a specific sample, this TC is 18 degree Kelvin. And that time maximum induction that it can withstand is the 24.5 Tesla. It is a huge magnetic field. So 
So it is the external magnetic field is this plot. They apply magnetic field HC1 and HC2 at two points. So this HC2 is equivalent to BC2. So that is 24.5 Tesla is the huge field and the current density is extremely high that is 10 to 7 ampere per square meter. Type 1 and type 2 superconductors. There are a few samples of type 1 and type 2 superconductors. Tin, mercury, tantalum, vanadium, lead, niobium are type 1, all are these elements. And so the type 1 superconductors are all elements and they require very low temperature, 14 it is 3.72 degrees. And VC also is not that high. Lead it is 7.19 degrees, Kelvin is the critical temperature, vanadium it is 5.4, it is just above the liquid helium temperature, tantalum and vanadium, mercury, when you are nearby. Elemental niobium, it is having <coughs> the TC 9.2. And type 2 superconductor, like this niobium T, niobium germanium, barium, bromide copper oxide then yttrium barium copper oxide is very popular one and this bismuth strontium calcium copper oxide high tc superconductor so these are ceramic mercury barium calcium copper oxide it is also very high, 130 to 135 degree Kelvin is the temperature. And current density ranging from 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 7. It's very high current density. So these are all about the type 1 and type 2 superconductors. Yttrium barium copper oxide specifically one crystallographic picture is shown in the figure. So the barium and yttrium are at the center of, of the three body center cubes. So barium and yttrium barium is at the center of the top cell and bottom cell so in between cell the body center element is yttrium and oxygen is sitting middle of the crystal arms and copper at the corners. So this special elements, yttrium and barium, they are at the center of the cubic structure. There will be some back end oxygen high also. So this is the sort of this crystal structure of yttrium, barium, copper oxide. These high temperature superconductors, HTS, 
these are like flat tapes are based on bismuth lead strontium calcium copper oxide so most of the high thesis superconductor are oxides we know oxides are not the conductors that's why these are mostly ceramic the tape has an outer surrounding protective metallic sheath the right figure is a hts tape having ac power of below 10 milliwatt per meter have a major advantage over equivalent sized metal conductor in being able to transmit considerably higher power loads coils made from hts tape can be used to create more compact and efficient motors generators producing magnets transformers and energy storage devices this is a photograph of the superconducting magnets the axial and the cross sectional area of the coil is shown at the top extreme left corner there is the superconductor embedded in copper matrix because the superconductor are embedded here superconductors are in the form of the filament that's why the filaments are embedded in a copper matrix the axial cross sectional view shows of the solenoid so these radial forces is there to combat that the structure should be very very rigid and the cross sectional view it is showing the blue is green that part is the coil then the majority of the part is the mechanical support structure the tlo a solid noid carrying a current experiences radial forces that's why this mechanical rigid support structure is essential the axis forces compressing the coil at the bottom those are the superconducting electromagnets used on mri machines operates with liquid helium providing a magnetic field of 0.5 to 1.5 tesla such a huge field a solenoid carrying a current experiences radial forces pushing the coil apart and axial forces compressing the coil these coils are so huge in compared to the height of a man so this shirami superconducting coil but it is very small but to withstand the radial forces the support structure has become really elaborate and 
it should be very rigid applications superconductors are used in maglev trains which can reach very high velocity mri scan machines medical science use brain imaging very high field high energy electric generators low loss high energy electric generators are produced with superconducting coils high tc superconducting coils energy storage device superconducting quantum interference devices quick this is actually being used for the for studying the paramagnetic and diamagnetic properties and many other many other investigations the large hadron collider probably you have heard of the name of this collider you see for generating high velocity particles traveling at a speed of light that uses superconducting coils large number of photons for conduct coils and the fusion devices which is called the artificial sun is the tokamak in superconducting tokamak very huge superconducting coil is used that largest superconducting magnet is commissioned in kolkata in variable energy cyclotron center it is a huge magnet produce 4.5 tesla in 45 kilonas field that is indigenous living here in india thank you